my Final Fantasy characters. Mm -hmm. No, but for those of you that are playing Kingdom Hearts 3, congratulations. It's been a long time coming. We got Kira Flax coming back yeah, on the stage. Kira coming back on the stage. This is after uh, after seeing his performance with his pit, I'm actually really excited to see you know, a little bit more, especially with his arrow play. And uh, the level of control he's been showcasing has been just stellar. Yeah, I'm curious to see who his opponent is. I think I might have an idea of who is coming up. I think this is Master Raven, right? Possibly. I don't want to assume. I, I want to want to see the tag, the in-game tag, and what character. Yeah, yeah. Because because if we see the character, we we can kind of see who it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there are. Well, actually, I, I don't know if Master Raven still plays Sheik in this game. Yeah, right? I was gonna yeah. say that too. If it's uh, yeah, the, the character might not. Have he been he might not. Yeah, because not because uh, speaking with Fuzik yesterday, he hasn't even been playing a lot of Sheik. He like he still likes Sheik and he busted out here and there, but he's more so been playing Lucina. I mean, that's one of the big things we've seen from a lot of the prior top tier mains in Smash. Is it for and going into Ultimate? Is it's not so much like many of the characters getting that much worse as much as like all the sheep players had a specific style they wanted to play right a very fun heavy movement heavy like execution style now you can do that with so many more characters on the cast you don't have to go to sheep for that and that's one of the main reasons why i think a lot of players are drifting away from the the sheets and the marios and so forth is that they're not forced to play them anymore for the way they want to play them. There's a little bit of a uh, issue. Just order. Oh, order. Who, should, who should be where? Oh, oh, because of like the stream overlay and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think it's just where they're sitting, to be honest. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, I did not There's expect this. Simon case. pick. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh, so I'm, I'm actually excited. This is the first Simon we've seen all day. And yes, it is indeed Master Raven. Yeah. Hailing from Florida. Simon going against Pit. I think Pit is the correct choice in this matchup, having the Orbiters to go ahead and try to reflect back a lot of these projectiles, and also just the ability to have the, to just delaying your recovery, because yeah. you know Simon is just going to set up shop right there with the Holy Water and the crosses, but Pit able to go ahead and have these multiple jump strikes to possibly get around them. Yeah, that and just having the ability to get a little breath of air using the Orbiters as well. That's going to help out a lot, but overall, Raven's been just owning all of this neutral space so cleanly. Really mixing up a lot of his whip options as well, not getting too reliant on any one zoning tool. You know, the Orbiter's again coming in the clutch, using it immediately to make sure that cross is his own. Kierflax is going to get caught by, you know, that, that flash kick, so to say, on that uppercut. Wow, up, angled. Forward air, able to take that one away. That is something you have to be aware of going against the Beaumonts. They can angle their aerials up or down. Yeah. She was just such a good follow up right after that cross, too. Uh, Lucialer sends him right back off stage, and I like that attempt from Kiriflax, understanding whenever the Belmonts are using their tether recovery, if you just toss a hitbox out there and you send him right back out one more time, most likely they're not going to come back. Yeah, and the great thing is because it's their forward air becomes their tether, that means they don't get a throw at that hitbox right in front of them when they're coming back to the stage, and that lets you harass them a lot easier. There we go, just calling out the empty landing this time with the up -air. No holy water yet. It ends up coming at the tail end, but again, the orbiters just coming out and really just kind of messing up the ledge trapping that Master Raven wants. Yeah. We're seeing, yeah, Master Raven now just leaving the projectiles away for now. And recognizing that Kira Flex is kind of reacting to them and tossing out the reflector right afterwards. Otherwise, so keeping up this great good space. Kira Flex still needing to find this kill. Wow, such a great recovery right there, just stalling in place with the double jump and still having the confidence to get that tether grab afterwards, not rushing into Cure Flax's blades. Yeah, Master Raven just really allowing the game to come to him at the moment. Like, he's tossing out the crosses, he's tossing out a lot of these whips, but he is waiting to see what Kira pushes first. If he's picking a defensive option that he knows he can cover, he punches it. But if it's in a situation where he has to overextend, he's opting to back off instead, but this time around getting a little too aggressive and Kira dunking him, but the immediate answer right back off of that smash attack. 
uh, especially for Caroline to just call out that jump immediately. Master Raven with a full stock lead now, and able to hold onto this house coverage in Smashville. You know, get that extra damage from the cross as well. The Holy Water ends up going off stage. Unfortunately, wanted to go ahead and cover the ledge. And again, just going to be able to buffer in that up B, calling out any sort of attack on the shield and getting himself some retribution for it. Oh, and that was actually a very nice usage of it, just because Pitnair was still active on shield. Only the first couple of hits end up hitting. So because that up B is disjointed itself to an extent, he was able to go ahead and beat it out. Oh, he ends up losing his oh, jump, and that's yeah, going go. to be it. Pureflax now putting himself to a 1 1 situation. He's going to need to be able to find this next opening fast, but this is very possible to do against the Belmont. He can force, yes, uh oh, Belmont's off stage. How are you going to go ahead and make it back? He ends up needing a neutral air. No, no, he ends up losing his jump. Pureflax coming all the way back to take that game. That is so huge for him, and that is the reason why, regardless of how many times you get pegged at by a Belmont, Keep your calm, you just tell yourself all I need, 30% and a little bit of air underneath his shoes and I can kill him. Wow. Kara flags. Alright, Kara. You could go ahead and just find the way that Master Raven just like to recover at the tail end of it. Kara Flax has actually had the edge guarders bracket. Because hmm? he had to fight a crop before this. Mm -hmm. He's just like, do you know how to edge guard or you're gonna get fight really hard right now? Yep, and like, like I talked about earlier, it's the fact that it just provides that opportunity to go ahead and go out there so hard, so deep. The constant hitboxes over and over. For some characters, it's just too much to try to overcome. And just for Simon specifically, if you are able to go ahead and occupy that space that they want to recover in, because there's only about like three angles they can even take, you're, you're going to be in for a good time. And then on top of that, you know, having so many jumps as can be just the light himself out there for such a long time. He can use all four of his jumps and then just up beat back on stage. Alright, there we have the up B one more time. I'm telling Kira to go ahead and get off of me. A down throw, no tech, but Kira just was not on top of it to go ahead and get the punish. <laughs> love the board, like the Where are you going? Where are you going? You're not getting into my zone. Get out of here. The up, I love the uses of the up tilt so much as well. It is a very slight disjoint, but when you get caught by it, you are up in the air. You have to go ahead and deal with the harassment from Simons because he can set up shop with more of the projectiles or just threaten you with his up air. The up air goes so far. Dash attack sending Kiraflax right back off stage. And because of the orbiters, what we're seeing from Master Raven is like he understands he cannot really toss out his projectiles too much. He's adapted quite nicely, opting to go with a lot more of these whip hits that Town Angle Corridor is going to find the mark, taking that stock away. And he's just trying to go ahead and extend his lead now. Another up beast, seeing that the falling up there was actually in the opposite direction. Master Rave is looking quite good here in game two. It's just kind of adapting to the way Kira has been playing him. Backdo sends him off stage, and again and again, Master Raven mixing up the way he ends up recovering. He's tried to, right? He tried to, like, double jump high and Kira got but the uh, push there always sent him direction that he's Alright, Dash attacks, sends Master Raven off stage. Thought he was going to get caught by that neutral air, but luckily for him, that is not going to be the case. Speaking of neutral airs, Master Raven ends up tossing a neutral air himself as he's landing, and that's something we're going to have to look out for, just because, you know, the Belmonts have some shenanigans with that falling neutral air to put you in a position where they can run up for a grab, or in some cases, they can get a conversion with that up B after it. Yes, yes. Going to be, again, using this up tilt, such a potent anti serial, like you pointed out, Miho. It just covers so many angles right above a Belmont's oh, head. The holy water. Gonna toss some more? No, he's gonna cover that get up with the uh, another hit of the forward tilt. Yeah, but the forward tilt not quite taking that stock. Going further and further out, 
but now we have Careflax sitting at 165. Wants to get that forward throw to get the stock, and that is what we have. Master Raven up two stocks to one now. We have to remember how, like, the percent on the Belmont, like, honestly doesn't really matter, right? Especially with the way that Kira Flax has been edge guarding. When he sends Raven off at that favorable angle, he's just able to so confidently wait oh my right goodness. by the line. Waiting ledge. for that down air there, yeah. G-Pick. Just wait and punish time and time again. Just he needs that nice opening in neutral. And Master Raven is being so dead set on keeping it from happening. Here we go, though. Going to be immediately rushing to the ledge with the tether. Just barely off the mark. Here come the whips. Making sure he stays at this ledge. This is exactly what Master Raven needs. If he's able to go ahead and possibly take the stock or just make sure Kira is just bloodied and battered for his last stock to try to clean up. Mm -hmm. Catching that back air and again, just that mix up of here's an immediate forward air on your shield drop. And down tilt, catching Kira, trying to approach. Forward air to take it away, Master Raven with a two stock to even up this set now. Mm -hmm. It's still like always stressful to watch though because you, you know that in the back of both players' minds they remembered how game one ended, right? Where it was such a dominant lead for Master Raven, 130% on the board. And like we're seeing that level of caution now in his recoveries. We're now like he's just rushing immediately back to that ledge as soon as possible. He knows if Kira Flax has any time to get off stage things go badly. So he's just trying to prevent that from happening altogether by like reducing his offstage time. All right, now I'm curious to see where Kira Flax is going to want to take a Belmont. I would actually say a smaller stage, uh, like FD perhaps, something where you're forcing the Belmont into the corner time and time again because they don't have much space. I can I consider Battlefield to an extent, Yeah. but I feel like that gives a little too much strength to Simon. Just because with the platform there, it really limits where you're going to want to go ahead and go, especially when the Holy Water is set at the ledge. Although Kira has basically shown that that's not an option because he's rising with Orbiters quite well, a bit. I mean, that was that was their game one stage, right? So I think oh, the yeah, SR no, locks no, no, them no. out of that. So, yeah, so yeah. that's not even a choice in the first place. But like, we do have that Yoshi's. Uh, Yoshi's story, actually, could be very funny. We're actually going to be getting Unova. Okay. Going to be, uh, yeah, medium length of stage. Also having platforms not in a place that makes it e any easier for a Belmont to recover, but still providing... Oh, and going to the Rob! Coverage. Okay! I think he was just having such a hard time piercing through the uh, the whip zone that Master Raven was setting up. So now Kira Flax opting for a character with a bit, not only a longer reach Nair, but also the power of his own top and lasers. Yeah, he's going to eat a quick 34 off of that Holy Water. 59 after all these projectiles. Master Raven, after that first edge guard... No, and he is just woken up. You see, you see the difference in Raven's play, right? Where he's throwing out all these projectiles on ledge wake up again. He's like, you don't have orbiters. You can't set up your reflector that fast. It takes a little bit of a wind up for for Rob's reflector. So I'm gonna be able to just keep harassing you now with my favorite tricks. Yeah, you can play his game now. Yeah. Oh, oh trying to set up a forward smash with the top. Can I just go ahead and just stop to that? Yeah, not quite gonna find. It's like, here we have all these episodes sending him right back off stage. Here comes another axe. Holy water now, just because he has to go ahead and recover. No, he's a gyro in the way, cannot set up correctly. Oh my goodness, just using the gyro himself. There we have another forwarder taking that stock. Solar can do solid damage, but yes, you pick really to your point. Master Raven just looks like he has just been unleashed. Now that there's no reflector on the bar, he can just toss out all his projectiles that he can. Right, I have to wonder whether Kiraflex took that into account when he made this counter pick, right? Like, the, the reason why the neutral was navigable for his pit was because Master Raven didn't have any incentives to throw out as many projectiles as he does right now. I, I do like the top of just getting in the way, but the thing is you shoot that top out and it bounces off to the center stage, and now you don't have that projectile anymore. And like, you know, he's got infinite ammo. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the times when the gyro is in play and it ends up hitting the Master Raven with the jack when his projectiles are coming out, it ends up just resulting in a trade. And at this point of the game, that is not what Kiraflax is going to want. Sitting at 159, you know, if he takes one more hit, he's going to be at a two-stock deficit and has... I'm saying it! Yeah, Master yeah. Raven all over. The endless whip harassment is constantly pressuring Kira Flax's shield. Here we go, just more 
Oh, just play it. You know, honestly, when you're dealing with a Belmont off the ledge, as terrifying as it is, you need to do that. Just pick an option. Because the longer you wait there, he gets his garage sale set up, and he puts up everything he owns, and then all your options are covered. He's gonna haggle you down eventually to get this stock. He'll be like, look, 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 it's a nice holy water. I'll give it to you for free. Finally, I'll even throw in a couple of axes. I'll, just one dollar. One dollar. <laughs> one heart. Just one heart. That's all I need. <laughs> one stock. Please. One game. One set. Uh, trying to threaten with that up air, but does it, does it a little bit too high. Master Raven has already shown he is ready to go ahead and punish with that up B. Here we go, though. We're going to just get that up throw to kill. Yep. No. no, still not going to be enough. Phenomenal DI on the part of Master Raven. And there you have Gearflex baiting out the uppercut this time around. Back throw has him off stage. But the laser going to go ahead and interrupt the setup, but it doesn't even matter. And trying to go use that uh, F tilt for back on stage. This is Pureflex actually has to not only finish off this stock, but take two more without making any mistakes. Sitting at 148 is going to be quite the mountain to climb. But you know, if you've seen any players go ahead and do it, it can be it can be Pureflex. I actually he he clutched out game one. You never know. Dude, I mean, Master Raven is in so much control right now. He's going to get that fourth throw. Look at that fourth throw. is going to kill now. We have now a bunch more potential for more projectile control. Most players just trying the to finish this off with the grab, yeah. Yeah, at this point, he Pureflex has to put up that shield to really any move that ends up coming out, and unfortunately, cannot put it up fast enough, getting caught by that whip one.